So this is uh, another segment of the 100 great problems of elementary mathematics and how to solve some of them with the aid of technology. Um, I'm going to skip through the pieces that are in previous videos. Now we're going to do Reggio Montanus' maximum problem. So, Reggio Montanus was a, a Swiss mathematician, uh, lived in the 1400s, and he asked, at what point on the Earth's surface does a perpendicularly suspended rod appear longest? In actual fact, he was thinking about where would be the best place to observe the planet um, Saturn, but phrased in terms of a, perp of a perpendicularly suspended rod. So let's model that problem. Here's my um, I don't really need any coordinates. Here's my planet. Here's my Earth, in fact. Um, here's my rod. And we want to know where to stand to make that rod look biggest. Well, first of all, my rod isn't perpendicularly suspended, uh, so I need to make this point at the centre of the Earth. One way to do that is to specify that the centre of the Earth lies on the extension of this uh, line. That's to use an incidence constraint. So now um, my rod is in fact um, pointing at the centre of the Earth as I move the rod. Um, it still points. However, to turn this into um, a mathematical problem, we need a little bit more. We need to define some or some things. First of all, we'd like to define what the radius of the Earth is. Now, I could put it in a, the actual number, but I'd rather just stick with R uh, for the radius of the Earth. I'd like to specify what the length of my bar is, so let's call that L. And we'd also like to know how far up, up above the Earth it is. It seems like that would help specify the problem. Um, so I'm going to specify its distance from the centre of the Earth to be R plus H. And now the question is, where would I stand, let's say at point B, in order that the bar looks the longest, or, or uh, in order that this angle is the biggest, the angle C, B, D. Well, again, to make it a little bit more mathematical, it would be nice to somehow specify where B is on the Earth. And one way to do that is to say, OK, I'm going to specify the angle between the bar and um, the, the, the line AB. And because this is going to be the, the variable that we're interested in, I'll just call it X. So um, what we'd like to know is what value of X makes this angle the biggest. Now, this could be phrased as a calculus problem. So if I ask for that angle, um, I get it uh, as an arc tangent, with, with some stuff lying around, uh, stuff inside the arc tangent. Um, if I know calculus, I can think, well, I need to differentiate that and then solve for the result for the derivative being zero. Uh, I have an algebra system handy, so I can use that. Let's go into maple, copy that as a piece of maple. So, I'd like to differentiate the above with respect to x. Uh, looks a bit complicated, but we'd like to ask me able to solve the above equals 0 again for x. And with a little bit of thinking, uh, Maple comes back with uh, a couple of arc tangents. Now, why should there, there be two solutions? Well, think about it. If the, if there's one solution on one side of the uh, of the the bar, there should be a similar solution on the other side. Let's just grab one of these and let's ask Maple to simplify it and see if that helps any. Uh, well, it helped a little bit, uh, not particularly very much. But let's grab that. 
um, copy it, and we're going to put it back into geometry expressions. Remember, this was this is the value of x which optimizes this angle, or makes this angle the the biggest. Let's paste it in, and um, so we can see. Well, first of all, uh, geometry expressions has worked out what the actual optimal angle is. Let's get rid of that. That's not. Uh, particularly important, but we have the optimum here, and we can uh, navigate the solution space doing things like, well, what happens if we um, lower our bar? Where does the where does the solution go? Um, and we can see that uh, see what happens as we as we pull our bar in, or what happens if we increase the size of our bar? Uh, how does it change? Uh, the value of x. Well, so so much for a calculus solution. We we, we you know we, this was a straightforward uh, piece of calculus. We put the uh, we took the expression, differentiated it, and solved. Is that how um, Regiomontanus solved the solution? Well, clearly not, because uh, he lived a couple of decades. Uh, before Isaac Newton. Uh, so what did Reggie Montanus do? Well we could look at our solution and with a little bit of insight we can we can see how we could have got a geometric solution. The little bit of insight I'm going to supply here. I'm going to um, draw the circumcircle of the points B, C, D. So let me do that. Now remember, I'm sitting at a solution to the problem. So there's the cir circumcircle of BCD. Now what happens as I navigate the solution space? We can see that there's a, a rather special relationship um, held between the circumcircle of BCD and the original uh, circle. In fact, we see that um, the two circles stay tangent uh, at when we're at a solution. Now, why would this be? Well, if we look, the line CD is a chord of the circle, which means that every um, every angle subtended at the circle, such as this, is actually going to be the same as this angle. This is a basic um, geometric fact about circles. Well, imagine if the circumcircle wasn't tangent but actually intersected in two different places. Both of those places would subtend the same angle. And in fact, any place in between those two would have a bigger angle. Um, so in fact, in order for, uh, for the point B to be uh, the best place to view, the circumcircle has to be tangent. There can't be a second intersection point um, because that second intersection point would have the same angle and points in between would be better.